Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, in this video, I am going to be trying out the Arteza Real Brush Pens and I'm going to be doing a project with them and also giving you my thoughts about them. And I'm going to use one of the DIY frames that I used around about a week ago uh, as a base for my project. Now, I did say last week, if anybody wanted me to show how to put the frame together in real time, then I would do so. So I have had a request to do that. So here goes. The sheet just tears from the pad. It's well glued in. So it's just a case of first of all removing that. Now when you look at the corners, oh, just showing you there that Arteza is actually stamped into it. Now you see the four corners, these are perforated and what you need to do is to remove those corners. So it's quite well held together, you do need to apply a little bit of, of pressure but just pull it down gently, it will come away. Give that bit a little wiggle I've found works best. Some's perforated, some's already cut through and just pull that away. And then do the same with the other three corners. And there we have those pieces. I just use those as little samples for trying things out on. So you can see there that our taze is there and I'm going to turn that down, face down. So you see on the long side there are three fold lines and on the short side there are four fold lines. Now I had another practice with another sheet and the way I found it easiest to put this together was to take a ruler and a bone folder and then to start going over the folds. Now you'll see there's those little flaps, just leave those for the time being. So fold it over the ruler, starting on the inside, and then use a bone folder or the back of a pair of scissors, the handle of a pair of scissors, just to flatten it out a bit. And I found that this then falls into shape much easier. So I'm going to go along the four fold lines. Difficult to see them on the screen, but they are quite clear when you're using them. And I'm just going to put those four in place. And then what I'll do is I'll go around the other three sides, putting all the folds in place. And remember, on the two long sides, there's only three folds on it. So now that those have all been pressed down. I'm going to take one of the shorter ends and just leave the flaps for the time being, the little flaps. But I'm going to take that and I'm going to start to fold it forward into a square. And it almost just rolls naturally into place because you've already put the folds into it. I'm just showing you there how that's done. Once more, just showing that. So your first piece actually ends up folded, goes along the bottom. So again, take the other side and roll it into place until you've got the square. What you're then going to do is take one of the long sides, take that little flap and push it in at the back. Do the same on the other side, push it in. Just showing you close up there how it goes. It does start to unfold a little bit, but that's okay. It's not so big that you can't hold it. Push those in. And then you'll see there's two, a little slit on each side. So you're then going to take the outside edge of the long side and push that down and into the little slit. And I'll show you it before I push it right in. You can see there. So the outside flaps in and then the little edge goes in there. And then you can just push it into place. Then repeat the process on the other side. So fold in the little flaps first of all. Find the little slits. Now there is little pieces of paper there. I think they can actually, they just pull out. So I'm not sure if they're intended to. I, I expect they are. Pull it forward and then push that outer piece from the long side into the little slits. 
I had a little bit of trouble with that one. I think it just kind of folded it a little bit. Because in filming, you know, you don't like to put your head right down to look closely, I had uh, just kind of folded it over a bit. So I just had to flatten it out a little bit and then push. Just showing you again how it sits and then it will all just push into place. And it really becomes quite sturdy. For one sheet of paper to be folded in that way, it really is quite sturdy. And there you go, you've got Arteza on the side. So let's take a look at these brush pens. So this is a set of 48 brush pens. Arteza say they're unique colours, they're blendable and they are water-based ink. Now, getting a bit of uh, reflection on the box, but we'll move away from that in a second. All the usual information on the back, a full list of all the colours along with the number of the colour. And they're non-toxic and it gives a warning for children under a certain age. So, they come sealed. I am just going to open that up. Now, for full disclosure, I should say, Arteza are not paying me to do this video. They have, however, provided these to me free of charge in return for me doing this video review. But they don't tell me what to say. So there we go, I've opened it up and a similar feel in terms of the way things are packaged, laid out in the trays. All very neat and, you know, will be able to be stored in these trays. So four trays, each with 12, and it also comes with a water brush. And I think this is a really handy feature. So the top just pulls off it and then it just unscrews open. Now, I had a bit of trouble with this and I think the reason being it unscrews in the opposite direction of their other water pens. It may just be me, but I think that was the issue. But it did take me a minute or two to fathom that out. So there we go. Once it's unscrewed, it easily fills with water. And I'm convinced it unscrews and re-screws in the opposite direction to most others. So, just going to put the rest of this on at speed and just going to take a bit of a look at them. This is a sapphire blue. It has the name on it and it has the colour on the end of the pen. So good way to look at it. So just showing you there, you can do some quite fine lines. Now, that was just the end of the DIY frames. You'll see that because it's slightly textured, it's not going down entirely flat. But I think the other thing is, first time using them, I found that once I started to use them a bit more, obviously the ink was flowing in them. So just using the water pen and it's blending out a little bit. I did notice with this paper that it didn't blend out fully, but it may be that I was just too slow and kind of going back to it. But you'll see later that they are in fact quite blendable. So that was just some little tests at this point. As usual, I want to do a swatch chart. I'm not going to sit and write all their names out, but what I'm going to do is a very quick chart just to show you the range of the colours. So just doing a few little lines with each colour and then I'll, I will show you the final chart. And there we go. So quite a nice range of colours, bright, vibrant, but they've also got some nice colours, that bottom line in particular, where there's the browns, the greys, and perhaps slightly more muted colours, but still vibrant in a sense. So just going on to the back of this, just to, to show you that they are blendable. So this side of the paper is a bit smoother, so just showing you that you can actually blend the two together quite nicely. Now when I turn it over you will see that 
it has gone right through this piece of paper so what you would want to do is to make certain that whatever paper you're working on if it's in a journal then you just need to check it for whether or not it will go through you know you wouldn't want to to ruin any pages you'd already done so so I'm going to clear these away and start on my project because I find a project is the best way to test things that was my picture my anemone from last week and I wanted to do something kind of similar this week in terms of style so I've used my own reference photos I've sketched out a butterfly I'm doing this one landscape whereas an enemy was portrait and I'd also captured an image of the kind of underside of the butterfly's wings so what I've done here a bit of artistic license I'm not just going to do a full representation of the butterfly I wanted to take some of that underside as well because there was lovely texture there as well so artistic license in terms of this is not an exact representation it's a stylized version so I've just used a biro pen just to ink over it so it becomes in a sense a bit like uh, a colouring in page. Just putting a little bit of, of shading on there. I just like to do that with the biro pen. Not going to do much more on this one today but I will add some biro in at the end. So I'm trying to decide what colours I'm going to use and I'm starting with bright blue, bubble bath pink, wisteria purple and light magenta. And I'm just going to start to get some colours down to begin with. Now what I'm going to do here is actually lay it down on a disposable palette sheet and then I'm going to start by painting it in and I'm going to do the background to begin with. Now what I should say is Arteza do have a YouTube channel and there are lots of examples on their channel of how to use their products. So great ideas for projects, great hints and tips on how to use the, the products. So I don't use pens of this sort a lot. I would use them from time to time in mixed media pieces but more just as, as one kind of piece of or one supply of a lot within mixed media. Whereas today I'm really using it as the main supply. So this is quite unusual for me uh, and I've not used these before so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to get but here I'm just trying to do background laying the colour down into the water I've been right around the background and what I'm trying to do here is just to create a kind of bright sky so laying down those pinks those blues purple etc just to get a nice sky so I'm using them at the moment in the way that I would use kind of watercolours and these go down this way really nicely. I'm really pleased with, with the way that they went down and a lot of fun just trying to build this background. So I gave that a good dry with my heat tool. Now I'm using autumn red, orange rust and red and I want to start to put in some of the little flashes of red that were on my butterfly photograph and I'm going to use these three colours together. Again just laying them down and I'm then going to use the water brush just to to paint them in. I'm not putting water down onto the page this time I'm just using the brush albeit that the the brush is actually wet. I managed to pick up a little hair there so this is still very much part of that first layer, just getting the colour down. And then I bring in the other two colours right over that. So right away I'm starting to get a bit of blending going on just directly there on the page. So I'm not mixing them as such, I'm just trying to bring the two of them or the three of them in the end because I do introduce the third one, just trying to bring those together just to get a nice colour 
for the flashes on the butterfly. So now taking coffee and also elephant grey. And again I'm going to put these down onto my palette. To clean the brush I just push some water out and that cleans any of the other colour off. I'm going to start to add in that darker colour. Here picking up some of the colours that were on the underside of the butterfly but ap applying them to this side. And again, just very much at this point, building up. Now I want to create the notion of texture so I'm not looking to blend these in fully. So just doing it on different parts of the wings. And then I'll take the, the grey, the elephant grey, and all I'm going to do here is to start to fill in around about the bit on the bottom wing. Just some initial colour to begin with. So I'm now taking the walnut brown and I'm going to start on the main part of the body. I'm trying to give that sense of it being kind of rounded, so darker down the edges. And in a moment what I'll do is I'll take the water brush and just blend it out just a little bit. So you see here just a small amount of water and just starting to pull that colour out and adding some colour to the centre but trying very much to keep it darker on the edges where it would be naturally darker because there's no light hitting it. And this is just helping me to build up depth. Then just going to take that same one and I'm just using it quite lightly and just kind of pulling it very quickly across. So I'm not looking here to blend this out. I want those lines in. And what I'll then do is take the water brush. I'm not looking to smooth them out though. I just pull it over a little bit. So I'm now taking ton, tawny, and I'm just going to start to colour in some of those other areas. So very much trying to get the notion of the different colours that were on the butterfly. Again, this is still my first layer going down. And you can see how I'm building the colour up on the butterfly. I'm now taking that elephant grey again and I'm just going to go across those areas that are actually white. I don't want them to look quite so white. There were some white bits on the butterfly but I'm again just using artistic licence and I'm just putting on a little bit of colour onto them. I dry that off fully and then I'm going back in with, I think it's the coffee, I use the coffee and the tawny, just showing you here that the brush can open up a bit. If you do want to close it, then just put it on a piece of paper and just roll it round slightly and the brush goes back into the, the fine point. So I had the tawny there and then I'm just going around it with the coffee colour just starting to get a bit of detail built up on that underwing. And I'll do the same on the other side. Taking my autumn red again and just in a similar way to before I'm just really touching the pen on there and kind of just pulling it across very lightly. I just want the hint of more colour on here. I don't want it down too thick, too heavy. just want that little hint. And again what I'll do is I'll take the water brush and then just blend it out ever so slightly, not a lot at all.
So just ever so slightly pulling that out in places and blending it. It's quite hard to see on there, but just blending it slightly. Again, back to doing a little bit more detail. I'm just having fun building this up. And you'll see I start to do some more dark edges and little lines. Again, just about creating depth and showing that the body of the butterfly is kind of rounded. I'm now going to take Ash Black. There is a noir in the packet as well, but I thought the Ash Black might work quite well. And I'm just going to start to put in some of those darker areas. Some on the under underside of the wing and some down the length of the body. And at this point, I decide that I'm actually going to start to use this almost as a liner. Now, when doing this, of course, if you press hard, the brush will open out a bit. And if you just keep it a nice light pressure, you'll get a thinner line. So I was doing a bit of both here. And I'm going to go round, right round outside. Some bits I'll do thin and some a bit thicker. So I'm now taking this dolphin grey. And I wanted to just start to darken up a couple of the areas. So touching it on the, the, the white where I'd already added a little bit of the elephant grey, but just wanting to add a little bit more, just want to take the, the starkness of those bits away. And I really like this colour. And in fact, I started to add it on top of some of the other colours as well. You see, I had done a little bit of shading there with the, the biro pen and I'm now just going over the top of that and I really like the way that this particular pen uh, kind of sat on top of all the colours. It was a great colour. It is dolphin grey. It's got a slight greenish tone to it I would say but it didn't matter what to put it on top of. It just added something quite special to it. I, I felt anyway so uh, yeah I think I'll be using that particular one a lot because it just worked so well with everything else. So just going round it and it helped in a way to start to blend some of the pieces together. I don't mean blend in the sense of smoothing the colours out but it just unified everything I would say. Even there on top of that it does change it slightly but it just added something to it. I decide now that actually I'm feeling my background is just a little bit too bright compared to my butterfly. So I'm using that dolphin grey again. I started just laying it down on its own, but now I've wet the background a little bit and I'm starting to blend it in a bit this way. Now I did add quite a bit of water, so you will see some of the other colours start to move, starting to get those kind of harder watercolour lines at the bottom of the picture, albeit it's at the top of the screen just now, but I actually quite liked that effect. I like that effect in watercolour. So just darkening that up a bit. Uh, almost making it just a slightly bit more grungy because I felt that the butterfly was a little bit grungy. So just going to introduce a little bit of Arctic blue here, just here and there on that background, just lifting some of that colour again. And that's my finished piece. So I was pleased with the way this turned out, my first time using these and I actually had a lot of fun 
using them. I do like these little frames. I think, as I said last time, I probably wouldn't have bought these myself, but now, having used them, I really like them. These would make nice little gifts to give to people and easy there and then just to, to hang them without having to go and get a separate frame. A great colour range in these pens. Uh, I'm not an expert in them, but I am certainly looking forward to using them a lot. Now, I'm not going to talk about price because I have noticed that sometimes with their Teza website, things will be on offer. And I'm sure when I received these just a couple of weeks ago, when I looked, this particular set in the US, I think, was on offer at that time. I don't know whether or not it still is. So, you know, if you're interested, keep keep an eye on uh, the prices on the site. Now, of course, I am an Arte's affiliate, and if you do buy using any of my links, then I do receive a small bit of commission, but at no extra cost to you. But I do have a discount code at the moment, which is Kylie Studio 2, and that is available until October 12th, and that would get you 10% off. So it is, of course, my pleasure to be able to show you these various items from Arteza and I feel privileged to be able to do so. I do hope that aside from just reviewing the products and showing you the actual products that you do enjoy the little projects that I actually do. Uh, I certainly enjoy doing these. Really pleased with this frame again. It held up well to a lot of water and yeah brush was fine as well. I think it's really nice being able to get a water brush in the set and of course last week there was also a water brush in the set of watercolours. I think that is a really helpful thing to have. So very much enjoyed doing this and I'm looking forward to using them more. I will use these both in mixed media pages but I also want to start to, you know, build up my expertise, if you like, or my experience anyway, in actually using them on their own, just seeing what I can create that way. So, as always, take care and look after yourselves. I do hope you've enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed doing it. And if you've watched this far, then thanks so much for doing so. All information about the discount code, etc., is in the description box below. So, as always, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.